Rule number one, a truck is not an investment. Rule number two, see rule number one. Nissan, Chevys, and Fords. Oh my. Trucks in America are way more popular than cars and it's easy to see why. They can handle everything you throw at them. They're your best friend in the snow and they can take you and all your friends on the roads less traveled. But buying a truck new is a guaranteed way to lose a ton of money. So I'm gonna show you nine trucks that lose the most money in five years, starting with the biggest loser and ending with the littlest. And the good news is the last truck on this list only lost 25% of its value in the first 60 months of ownership, which is crazy when you consider most trucks lose more than that in the first year, especially when, not if you mod it. It's great to see you guys again. Let's go. So real quick, how this is gonna work, I'm gonna run you through a quick overview of each truck, starting with the one that depreciated the most and ending with the one that depreciated the least. Pretty simple. And at the end of each rig, I'll show you exactly how much the 2015 model year depreciated over five years using cold hard data. And if you wanna learn how to properly buy any of these rigs using the ideal car or ideal truck strategies, check that out up here. All right, let's get into this. What? America's most popular pickup is also America's biggest loser, but its proudest achievement is also its biggest downfall. That's why this higher than average depreciation actually makes sense. Since it's America's best selling pickup, there are a ton of options on the used market, so they don't hold value very well. There's just too much competition. Either way, it's built Ford tough, and it's easy to see why the F-150 has such a loyal fan base. And as you can see, a truck you bought for 50 grand back in 2015 would now be worth about 26.8K or 46.9% less. So the ideal deal is buying a 2015 or slightly newer because that's when they incorporated all the aluminum. So they're great trucks and incredible values. Now, as far as what I would buy, I would probably get a limited and you wanna get a 2015 or newer F-150 because they went to an aluminum chassis, aluminum frame rather than the steel frame. It's actually lighter and stronger, but the limited is their top tier model and it's a beautiful thing. These trucks were over $60,000 new. And now you can pick them up for 33 grand and using the ideal truck strategies, you're gonna be able to get it for less than that. Ah, uh, Ram trucks, specifically the half ton Ram 1500 are built to serve and can do pretty much everything well. It'll haul ass when you need to if you opt for the Hemi. And that turbocharged eco diesel workhorse will haul just about anything you want with a low end grunt. Yet overall, these rigs see heavy depreciation in the first five years. Not far behind the F-150, these puppies are depreciating 44.7% in the first 60 months of ownership. Not an ideal deal to buy these new. In 2014, the Ram actually added the Eco Diesel V6 to the lineup, and so I would definitely be looking for one of those, which this one has. It's a 15 Bighorn crew cab, and it's a nice truck. Uh, the nice thing about it, though, is it has that Eco Diesel V6, so you're gonna get a lot of low-end torque, and for 23 grand, that's a pretty good deal. These heavy duty pickup trucks manufactured by General Motors are some of the best in the business. They're just extremely likable and Chevy sells a lot of them. One of the main reasons, they are very dependable, which is good if you're going to use a truck like a truck and find new roads. And you can also depend on them depreciating 38% if you buy it new which isn't bad for the Bowtie brand. The third generation Chevy Silverado was released in 2014 and this C71 package is gonna be pretty hard to beat. For only 18,000 bucks, you can get this good looking truck. It's gonna be an incredible value. It's got a V8. I mean, there's not much to be said. This thing is a, a badass truck. Nissan doesn't have the best reputation right now with their former CEO being an international fugitive. Oh boy, that guy. 
Let me tell you. And so the Nissan truck might be worth a look if you like a truck that drives much smaller than it actually is. Plus, it's a hardworking, upscale truck that doesn't cost a fortune to get into, especially if you're going to handle the big jobs. And outperforming many of its domestic competition, Titans are only losing 37.3% over the first few years of ownership. I really don't think the Nissan Titans get enough credit with the Pro 4X, which is the off-road outfitted Nissan Titan. These things are extremely capable and they're pretty good looking, I'd say. But for under 30 grand, I mean, that's a great value for a half ton truck. The Sierra depreciates a little bit slower than its sibling from Chevrolet, the Silverado. And this truck is professional grade. And that six function multi-pro tailgate is just next level. You got the main tailgate, then you got a load stop for hauling some wood, the easy to reach function, and last but not least, the step. I mean, what could they come up with next? They must have had some geniuses come up with that engineering feat. Somehow they, they didn't invite me. And the main reason a lot of these trucks sell is because they have the high-end Denali trim, which is the ultimate truck if you're looking for a heavy, luxurious rig to rock like a pro. And the Sierra may be a smarter buy than its Silverado brethren, as it loses just 36.9% in value over five years. Now the GMC Sierra is the brother from another mother of the Silverado, and these came with an optional 6.2 liter and an eight speed automatic transmission which is great for towing this one doesn't have it so if you're going to be light on the towing especially with the six speed automatic the wider gear ratios aren't optimal for pulling stuff but for eighteen thousand bucks this 1500 slt crew cab is really a nice truck and uh i mean i wouldn't mind driving it if you like car like driving experience look no further than the Honda Ridgeline. No, it doesn't have the exceptional towing capacity of its foes. And no, the off-roading prowess this thing has is, well, about as good as running down a hill without shoes on. Uh, that's gotta hurt. The Honda is a new truck to love. And one of the things you'll love about it is how much you'll be able to sell it for in five years. Yep. Not bad at all, losing 36.1%. In 2017, the Honda Ridgeline was actually named North American Car of the Year, and it's won a bunch of awards, and it just does everything really well for a midsize pickup. And if you pick up this RTL all-wheel drive for 23 grand, I can't think of a better value, but its looks are a little suspect. Great truck either way. There's no denying the Nissan design language is 100% early 2000s, and it won't be winning any awards for creature comforts or aesthetic beauty, but it still could be the muscle that you need. It's just a no-nonsense mid-size pickup truck that gets the job done, plain and simple. It's the truck that takes us back to the time when people bought trucks to use them as well, trucks, and not high-end, high-luxury, multi-purpose rigs we see being sold left and right today. And so the Frontier isn't that heavy on depreciation, just 33.7% in five years of ownership. If you're gonna buy a Nissan truck, you gotta go with the Pro 4X package, which is their off-road package, just like we talked about with the Titan. This thing is pretty capable off-road, and still, for a mid-sized truck, is a good commuter during the week. So you can have your fun on the weekends, take it to and from work during the week, and you got a good truck. And the fact that you can pick these things up for under 20 grand all day long, it's a ideal deal if you can get over the looks. Of course, Toyota, a brand synonymous with long lasting sales values, is going to pepper the best of the list. The Toyota Tundra is the truck that's changing it all. It's a full-size Japanese built powerhouse that has the looks and reliability that are hard to beat. And it's not as much of a workhorse as the other options on this list. But if you're looking to daily drive it during the week and tow your boat on the weekends, you'd be hard pressed to find a more capable unit. And since it's such a well-rounded rig, it's one of the least depreciating trucks you can buy today. Yep. We finally dipped into the 20s, with the Tundra depreciating 27.9%. When this gen of Tundra were released, you could get them in five different trim levels, and the SR5 is second from the lowest, but it also is an incredible value. 
And I mean, for under 25 grand, this big blue full-size Tundra is definitely worth a ride. Not bad, but it gets even better. Okay, so nowadays, if you don't like losing money, buying a Toyota truck is obviously the way to go. And the Toyota Tacoma has been calling all adrenaline junkies for decades. If you're looking for top tier reliability and legendary off-road prowess, wow, I'd like to see the other trucks on this list do that. The Taco is the one to own right now. People hang on to these for years, decades even, because they are just that good. I love these trucks so much. So I convinced my best bud Pete to grab a blazing blue pearl off-road six speed, which after 35,000 trouble-free miles, he's still loving it. Hey Pete. And since he's a finance guy, he's loving the insane depreciation, or lack thereof, of just 25.5%. Now, if you're gonna get one of the least depreciating vehicles in the world, definitely get an off-road six-speed manual for the Tacoma. It is one of the most fun mid-sized trucks that you can drive at any price point. And the fact that you can now get these for under 25,000 bucks is a steal. And you'll be able to drive this for 10 years and sell it for 15 grand. 10 years and only lose $10,000. That is an ideal deal. Which brings us to the ideal question of the day. Your favorite, dare I say, ideal truck of all time, new or old, what is it? Let us know your pick down in the comments. Because trucks are so versatile these days that it might make sense to get an ideal truck for the channel. And your comments might help us shape our thoughts on which ones we should seek out. But one of the things is for certain, we and you should never buy a vehicle in this color. Or just let YouTube pick what you should watch next. Oh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. But either way, you can't lose and as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.